From now on, Holy Father, not my will, but your will be done. I said, Father, you have chosen me. Give me the strength to obey. I will follow you no matter what it takes. If you know me, you cannot, you cannot be neutral about me. Either you will hate me or you will love me. Because there is one, only one important business in the world. It is the business of salvation. <laughs> September 13, 2003. When you find God, you find His love. Because God is love. Ganon ang pag-ibig ng Panginoon. Walang katapusan na yan ay bumabalik-balik sa atin. If you want to receive, you have to give. And receive it by faith and say, Lord, I will touch you. Because the game plan of God was to save us from seeing through the power of love. He has completed his salvation works in the Spirit. After a put of me, the door is open for everyone to come. The salvation works of the Father is now completed in me. Salvation is here. How many of you here have had prayers that have been answered by God. Raise your hands. You prayed and God answered you. Raise your hands. How many of you here have been receiving answers to your prayers every day? It is supposed to be like that. There are several things one must do before he can get an answer to every prayer. I'm, I'm going to talk about receiving answers to our every prayer. Everybody says, receiving answers to my every prayer. In fact, there are some, some things one must do to be heard of God, if at all. We now uh, know that as a born-again Christian, we have a living relationship in the family of God. We can call him Father after we've received baptism in the Holy Spirit, uh, making us by uh, our own spiritual rights as the children of God. And uh, the Bible tells us that uh, there are so simple things uh, to do to pray and then get answers to those prayers that many, many Christians do not know. Now I would like to preach about that today. How to get an answer to your every prayer. There should not be one prayer that a child of God, when he prays, does not get the answer. Because our God in heaven already has promised that. He is not only our God, but at the same time, he is now our spiritual father. We have that spiritual right because we were born again into his kingdom. Now the question that many ask is, is it God's will to answer our every prayer? May I ask you that question? Is it God's will to answer your every prayer? Amen. Amen. It is God's will that He answers your every prayer. I mean every prayer. Whether great or small, it is God's will that he answers those prayers. The first thing to do before you get an answer from God is to believe that God wants every prayer to be answered. 
That is, it is His will to answer all who pray to Him in faith in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to the promises. It can be definitely stated here and now that it is the highest will of God for every man to get an answer to every prayer that he prays provided he prays the right way. How do we know that it is God's will to grant every prayer if it is, uh, if it is right, if our prayer is right? How do we know that he will grant us our prayers? We know this uh, from the plain written word of God. That's why we have this guide. We are like travelers from earth to glory. Our journey is from earth to glory. Without a map, we are lost. And in every question that lurks in the minds of every Christian, if you don't have the answer from the Word of God, then you might be lost and listen to, to voices outside from the words of God that might mislead you or deceive you. But because we have the Word of God, then we can certainly find the answer to our questions from the Word of God itself. Amen. Amen. The Word of God says that God has promised to answer every prayer of His children who prays in harmony with His Word. To prove this, I am going to show you some of the scriptures that it is God's will to answer our every prayer. The first uh, that I have read is uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 11. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Ask and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If he then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that loves him? Now, let us continue some of those uh, verses again that can be found in the Bi Bible. Uh, in the Bible that says that it is God's will for our every prayer to be answered. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as big as that of a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Everybody says, Nothing shall be impossible. Unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Matthew chapter 17 verse 20. That is one of the promises of God. Now let us hold on to those promises. The devil wants us to be blurry. When we see the word of God. He wants us to read the word of God. But he does not want us to receive and accept the word of God as it is. He does not want us to have faith in the words of God. That's why when you listen to me while I preach the word of God. Please listen intently, understand what is being said, and then let it sink into your heart, and let it sink into your understanding, so that the devil who is the robber, the thief, cannot steal those words. Those words will multiply and regenerate in your heart, and thereby you get plenty of harvests, which we call blessings from him. Nothing shall be impossible to those that believe. Hallelujah. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If you have faith and doubt not, Everybody says, If you have faith and doubt not, Yes, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, But also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed. And be thou cast into the sea. It shall be done. And all things. Everybody says all things. Whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. Believing. Ye shall receive. Whatsoever you ask in prayer. All things. Whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, 
ye shall receive. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, as I've said, the Lord is not a liar. These are scriptural proofs that God wants to answer our every prayer. The devil would want us to think that it is impossible to get the answer from God. But if we glean from these words and from the word of God, it is the easiest thing to pray and receive our answer to our every prayer from our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father is a good God. He is a God that answers prayers in the Old Testament. He is a God that answers prayers in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And He is the God that answers our prayer even today. Because the Bible says, He is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hallelujah. That's recorded in Matthew chapter 21, verses 21 to 22. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, everybody says, if thou canst believe, if thou canst believe all, things are possible all things are possible to him that believeth. To him that believeth. All, things all things are possible, are possible to, him to him that believeth. That believeth. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now repeat these words with me. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Only the things that you say and believe that they shall come to pass, only those things shall come to pass. Hallelujah. There is nothing that we have prayed about to God and we believed and God did not answer. There is not one prayer that we made to God that He did not answer. We've been talking about uh, a daily telecast. It's not possible. We've been talking about reaching every home in the Philippines with the gospel of Jesus Christ, the name above every name, that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in the Philippines. And this is what is exactly happening right now. We will not only claim that Jesus Christ, the name above every name, is the King of Kings in the Philippines, but we will even include the world, including the United States of America. I proclaim in the 50 states of America, that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in the United States of America. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And that will come to pass. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. What things? Everybody says, what things? What things? So ever. Yeah. You, desire. you desire. When you pray. When you pray. Believe, believe. That you receive them. And you shall have them. When you pray by faith. The thing that you prayed for is not yet seen by your physical eyes. But the dictation of faith in your heart says, I must believe that the thing that I prayed for, although I cannot yet see it with my own physical eyes, yet my faith tells me that I have to believe it as though I already have seen it. And I will have it. 
<laughs> that is what the Lord is trying to tell us. So it is the will of God that our every prayer is answered. Amen? Amen. What did the Lord say in John 14, 12 to 15? The Lord said, And whatsoever ye shall ask. Everybody says, And whatsoever ye shall ask. In my name, in my name that, will I do, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. John chapter 14 verses 12 to 15. That is what the Lord Jesus Christ said to us. Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. Now I want that to sink into your heart and to your mind. Whatsoever ye shall ask whatsoever whatsoever means anything <laughs> you ask for healing the Lord will give you healing if you ask for money just tell the Lord how much and he will give it if you're asking for a house just tell the Lord what kind of a house. And he will give it. If you're asking for a job, tell the Lord what kind of a job you want. And the Lord will give it to you. If you shall ask anything. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am asking the Lord that I will be an instrument. For the salvation of many, many souls in America. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm asking the Lord in my prayer that I will be used in the 50 states of America for the salvation of many, many souls that will proclaim that Jesus Christ, the name above every name, is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords until He comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hi, third two. Ye have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. John chapter 16 verses 23 to 26. Now I am still giving you the scriptures that tells us that it is God's will to answer your every prayer. John 16, verses 23 to 26 says, Hi, there too, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask and ye shall receive. Everybody says, ask and you shall receive. He said, Hi, there too, ye have asked nothing in my name. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, he said, and you will receive that your joy may be full. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe. Everybody says, must believe. Must believe. Must believe. Must believe. That he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The Bible says in James chapter 1 verses 5 to 8. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And give it to all men liberally, and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Everybody says, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toast. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. When you ask anything from God, you must ask in faith. Do not doubt, do not waver. Because if you doubt any word, any prayer that you ask God to give you, 
then you are like a wave of the sea. And God said, you will receive nothing from him. Hallelujah. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. James chapter 1 verses 5 to 8. The Bible tells us, for if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and he knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, everybody says, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. First John chapter 3 verses 20 to 22. Uh, I have uh, repeated the uh, phrases that I would like you to remember. And whatsoever we ask we receive of him. Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. First John chapter 3 verses 20 to 22. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, everybody says, if we ask anything, according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, everybody says, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. First John chapter 5, 14 to 15. I have just given you the most powerful verses about God promising to answer our every petition. For God promising to answer our every prayer. When the devil comes to you and says, God will not answer you or you have been praying to God for a long time and no answer has come. You just uh, face the devil and uh, tell the devil that you are a liar. My God is the God of truth. He can never lie. Devil, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Get away from me. Hallelujah. I have just given you some of the verses that promises that God, uh, that it is God's will to answer our every prayer. Every prayer must be answered because we are the children of God and it was His promise written in the Word of God that uh, He has given to us that He is willing and it is His will to answer our every prayer. That's why praying is very important because praying is talking to God. We talk to God in the morning, we talk to God at night, we talk to God at noon, we talk to God practically every day. Anything that you want, you must have to talk to God about it. If you ask anything, he said, I will do it. Many, many Christians do not know what prayer really is. A true knowledge of what prayer means is necessary. Praying is the offering up of our desires for lawful and needful things we want that are promised by God with humble confidence that we will obtain them through our Lord Jesus Christ for God's glory and for our good. It is the pleading of our cause in God's court. You're like a lawyer going into a court and then pleading your cause to the Lord or else you're like uh, the... Uh, the uh, widow woman who went before the judge that was wicked and the judge would uh, hear none of her petitions. But later on the judge relented and he said, I must have to answer this woman or see where is me. And then the woman got her petition answered. So praying actually is like going to the court of God and then giving a uh, God in, in his court our petitions or our desires prayer is seeking God's help in matters that are beyond our power Lord I cannot do this I need your help 
That's why I am coming to you in the spirit and praying and petitioning you that you have to answer this prayer for me. Praying is the personal appeal to present God, to a present God based upon his will and his word. And, uh, and uh, our lawful desires are being, uh, are being uh, manifested before God by saying, Lord, this I need, this I want. I am your child. I have the right to call to you. I have the right to call to you in prayer. And you will answer me. Praying is not uh, talking to a dead God. Because our God is alive. Praying is talking to a living God. That's why when you begin to pray, you feel the power of God in your heart. Your prayers are coming up before God. Look at Cornelius. The Bible says that he was a man that prays with all his house. And one day an angel appeared before him. And the angel said, Cornelius, God has sent me from his throne because your prayers ascended up before God, before his throne, as a memorial unto him. Now, Cornelius thought that God did not know who he was. But God knew who Cornelius was because of his prayers. His prayers ascended unto the throne of God and became memorial to him. That was the reason why a messenger from God was sent. An angel was sent so that uh, the salvation of Cornelius would be completed. He called for uh, Peter the apostle. And Peter went to their house and preached the uh, totality of the gospel to them. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 10 verses 44 up to the uh, last verse. And while Peter was yet preaching the word unto them, the Holy Ghost fell upon all of those that were listening to his words, and the Jews that were with Peter were amazed that the baptism in the Holy Ghost was also poured out unto the Gentiles. And Peter, upon seeing this, he said, Can a man forbid water that this should not be baptized? Who received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How did Cornelius, uh, how did Cornelius uh, receive the totality of salvation? By prayer. God answered his prayers. God answered his petitions. Hallelujah. When Peter the Apostle, who was known to be the spokesman of the uh, apostles that were together with him, they were persecuted um, by the Romans and by the Jews and uh, of all of those uh, that uh, have followed their, uh, their career in the uh, acts of the apostles. One day, Peter was captured was put into prison and then uh, the whole church uh, came together into one place and they prayed intently their desires were were manifested before god through prayers and uh, they prayed that peter would be released from jail unharmed and you know what happened the lord heard their prayers and he sent an angel to the prison to the to the jail and the angel by means of his power shook the foundations of the prison, all the walls quivered, and then all of those uh, steel gates sprung open, and then Peter was freed, and uh, Peter was uh, sent by the angel, was guided by the angel uh, from the prison to the house where they were praying, and the people that were praying saw Peter, and they cannot believe their eyes, but it was also an answer to prayers. God does answer prayers even up to our present today. He is not a liar. When we pray, we give God our lawful desires. It is a cooperation with God's willingness to manifest His goodness to all those who have faith in Him and depend uh, upon Him for help. We are dependent on a powerful God for help. There are things in our own power that we cannot do. They are beyond uh, our own human powers. And then that is when we come to God in prayer and ask Him for His help. We know that He is a good God and we are depending upon Him, especially so that we are now the children of God by virtue of our newborn again experience. Prayer is simply asking and receiving from God. And... Uh, that is the theme of the chapters that I have, uh, 
I have just uh, given to you. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Every one of us should know how to pray. Prayer is like talking to your wife about something. Prayer is like talking to your friend about something. If you have parents, it is a child talking to his parents about something that he needs in his life. It's just simple. You just go into your closet, close it behind you, and then, uh, and then open up your heart and tell God every bit of what you want in your life. Just open up and then communicate to God directly. The Bible says that even before we have said something, God knows that we have need of them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Prayer is not like, uh, as I said, talking to the dead. We don't have a dead God. Our God is not a God of stone, it's not a God of wood, it's not a God of gold and silver. So we don't have to memorize our prayers. Spontaneously, you just come to the presence of God and unravel what is in your heart and say, Lord, this is what I want in my life. This is what I need. I'm your child and God is going to hear your prayers. That is what prayer is really all about. Amen? Is it important to pray? It is important to pray because there is power in prayer. Amen. 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 Don't you ever forget to pray. Prayerless Christians are powerless Christians. If you are prayerless, you don't even know how to praise God. If you are prayerful, you will even understand what I'm saying right now. Amen. Hallelujah. If you are prayerful, you won't come to church and just sleep listening to the words of God. You won't. You will not be lazy. Huh? Prayer is important because there is power in prayer. Amen. Somebody says, uh, prayer changes things. I would rephrase that. I would say, prayer changes people. And people changes things. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Prayer is important because there is power in prayer. There can be no greater thing accomplished in life than to learn to pray aright and to realize the importance and the power of prayer. The importance of prayer can be easily understood when we come to know that anything and everything we possibly can want in life can be received through prayer. Hallelujah. Can be received through prayer. This enables us to realize the tremendous power of prayer. This ministry is existent today because of the power of prayer. This ministry is an answer to prayer. This pastor is an answer to the saint's prayer that God would send them an anointed pastor. This ministry is an answer to prayer because there are saints of God that have prayed to give them a ministry that genuinely loves souls. And you have it right now because that is an answer to prayer. The energy of prayer is even greater than the hydrogen or atomic energy known to man. It is greater than 100 million TNT. It is greater than 100 million megaton of bombs known on earth. The explosion and the energy of prayer is greater than that. Prayer will even move heaven and earth and bring everything to us that we command that is covered by the promises of God. It is God who said, regarding the works of mine hands, command ye me. Hallelujah. Many people do not have power because they are not prayerful. You want that God moves heaven and earth for you to answer your prayers? Be prayerful. Spend time in prayer. Every morning, every noon, every night, spend time in prayer. Do not ever go to sleep without you kneeling and then asking God in prayer. 
telling him everything that you want in prayer communicating with our heavenly God in prayer is so powerful that Satan trembles at one saint which is weak when he sees him kneeling in prayer hallelujah and you begin to accumulate that power in the spirit when you begin to lead a prayer for life start praying right now start and and uh, and uh, try it for one month pray in the morning noon and night for one month just talk to god about yourself just pray to him and just communicate with your spirit your spirit and the spirit of god communicates together and god's power is going to also be communicated to you and then command something in your life and it shall happen hallelujah there is power in prayer hallelujah it matters not what the need is or even the want is in life prayer will bring it about prayer is very important if you are sinful and bound by every vile habit and passion in life prayer will break every fetter in a moment of time this has been proved by the conversions of the vilest and lowest sinners that has ever lived. As we have often seen. I've seen in this ministry and I've seen the vilest and the, and the, and the lowest of sinners come to the Lord and, uh, and, and, uh, and get saved because of the power of prayer. We have intercessors that are praying for lost souls to come to the Lord. We thank God that these prayers have not gone unheeded before God. God has answered every one of them. If you want healing for the body, hallelujah. If you want healing for the body, if you want healing for your body, prayer will make you perfectly whole. As well as in the spirit. If you are troubled emotionally, if you are troubled mentally, you don't have peace. And the peace was stolen by the devil from you. You can have it back. Claim it. Don't lose your victory to the devil. Go to prayer. If you felt like you are powerless, go immediately to prayer. Pray every day. Communicate to God. Ask. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before you know it, you feel that power flows in your heart and in your life. If you want success in business, prosperity, and freedom from failure in life, prayer will bring it about if you truly pray. If you want to be successful in business, pray. If you want prosperity, pray for it and ask for it in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't do it alone. The Bible says without me, you can do nothing. Ask for it. Don't do it in your own power. Hallelujah. Ask God for it. Everybody says praise the Lord. Praise the, Lord. the Bible says all things are possible to him that believeth. And this takes in anything that needs to be done in human experience. Anything that you want in your human experience. Success, prosperity, healing, salvation. You can have it when you pray. <laughs> Some people come to our meeting and they never receive healing. Because they don't pray for it. Don't expect God to heal you if you do not pray for your healing. If you did not ask God for your healing to heal you. And when you ask God, you must ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, tossed to and fro. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. If you want to receive anything from the Lord, you pray by faith. Believe that you already have received it and you will have it. Now, we as born again Christians... We must have to master the art of prayer. Amen? Amen? Have you noticed when you pray, there are times that you have to battle with your flesh.
You have to keep yourself awake. You have to struggle, some unsuccessfully, because they have slept and they said we've lain prostrate before the Lord. Not actually, because they slept. You must have to master the art of prayer. You can only master that if you pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. You must go beyond the boundary of your flesh. How do you do that? First of all, you pray to God and say, Lord, let me pray in the spirit. Give me the ability and the power to pray in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Prayer is a real art that must be learned before we can get anything that we want from God. Prayer is simply the art of a child getting things from his father. There are children that have perfected the art of asking from their fathers. Maybe that morning your father is somewhat like uh, not in the mood or your father is grouchy. And uh, it's very hard to talk to him. But there are children that have perfected and mastered the art of asking. Whether the father is not in the mood or whether the father is grouchy, when they come near to them, their father's mood would change. And they would get anything that they want from him. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can do that in prayer. You have to master that art in prayer. Hallelujah. Now, I am only telling you this because I want you to picture a true idea of a right and perfect relationship between God and the one who prays, between father and child. In Matthew 7, 7 to 11 that we, uh, that we have just read as our text, one must learn to draw nigh to God and rely wholly upon Him for the needed grace for body, soul, and spirit to come together and be pleasing to God. As in James chapter 4, verses 7 to 10, one must become skilled in faith and prayer and cease all doubting as we have seen in previous chapters. And then prayer will become a simple transaction of business between God and the Father, God the Father and His child. It is the art of perfecting asking from God anything as your child. Never doubting anything. Hallelujah. Amen. When uh, you are a beloved child of your father, you come to him. You know what to do in order to receive something from him. Now, this is the same thing when you uh, come before God as his child. You must have to perfect that art in the spirit. Hallelujah. Be pleasing to God. Make prayers as simple and as definite as possible. Don't run around the bushes and don't generalize with God. Make your prayers as simple and definite as possible. Father, I need you to bless me today because I have a transaction in my business and I want to close this transaction with me today. Bless me that I might be successful. Amen? Amen. Very simple, but it is a direct, simple prayer. Then, you learn how to turn all of your problems to Him. When you come to God, do not nag or do not complain or do not murmur or do not talk to anybody with a bad spirit. You must have to go to God and learn how to pour out all of your problems to Him. Depend upon Him to help you and God will help you. Do not be afraid to take the least problem to him. For he cares and is pleased when we have simple childlike faith in our Father. Give all your cares unto him. For he careth for you. From the least 
up to the greatest of our requests, let them be made known to him. Amen? Amen. 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 Do this every day. Do this every day. Talk to your father every day. All of you that talk to God this morning, raise your hands. You want to be joyful? Learn to pray. You want to receive anything from God? Pray. You want to receive a blessing that you have prayed for for a long time and you did not receive it? Go back to prayer. You want to have power? Pray. Amen. You want to receive money? Pray. Anything that you want from him, you must ask in prayer without wavering. And God will give it to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He has revealed to us that the very hairs of our heads are even numbered. And that not one power falls to the ground without his knowledge. According to Matthew chapter 10 verses 21 to 31. Let God not be our father only. Let, don't let God be your father only. Let God be your friend as well. In every phase of your life. You are not my father only. You are my friend. He is interested in our salvation. That's why he took us out from the sin of the world. He is interested in your health. When you have anything that you want to complain to God about, you are not feeling well, Lord, I have a stomachache. When you pray, tell him, Lord, the cathedral is so far, I cannot let my pastor lay hands on me, and I don't have a telephone to call. <laughs> you go to your closet, you go to your room, and then talk to your Father in heaven, and tell him that you are sick. Lord, I am sick in the stomach. Please heal me. He is interested in the healing of your body. <laughs> Lord, I have a headache. Heal me right now. He's also interested in your business. He wants you to succeed. Everyone here that wants to succeed in their business, raise your hand. If you want to succeed, you just have to tell God about it. Say, so, Lord, I want to succeed in my business. God is going to give you the ability. God is going to give the capacity. And don't worry about it. Because he is the one that will make or lead the way for you. Don't be surprised if all of the people will seek for you. And you will find one day that you are standing in the midst of of success. To God be the glory. If you have a store, tell God about your store. Don't go to the Chinese and say, uh, I want a Chinese priest to uh, make feng shui uh, out of my, uh, my store. Don't go to the Chinese to make feng shui of your store so that you become successful. You go to God. You go to your father. You just tell him, I've opened this bis business, Lord. I want it to be successful and I want you to be praised because of my business that becomes very successful. If you stand in the midst of success, give glory to God. God is interested in everything that you are concerned about. He is interested about your children. Lord, protect my children. Protect them from accidents. Lord, I pray that you protect them from bad people. You protect them from Abu Sayyaf, Lord. <laughs> you protect them from bad spirits, Lord. You protect them from any that would harm them. Tell him about all of your concerns in life through prayer. Don't you ever sleep without telling him about all of your concern. Do all you can 
do all you can in prayer. Say everything to God about your concerns in prayer. And then after that, leave the rest to Him. He is a faithful God. He will not let you down. He is a God of power. He is a God of blessing. He will answer your prayers. Now, this is our ground for asking and receiving. Have you noticed when there are electrical appliances? When one's positive and negative is connected, then there is a ground. Amen? Yes. Now, you have to have a ground for asking and praying. What is your ground for asking and praying? The true ground for prayer and its answer is to be born again. There are people that are born again that are born again in water only, but they are not born again in the Spirit. Lord, I want to be born again in the Spirit. Everybody that is born again in the Spirit, raise their hands. Have you been born again in the Spirit? If you are born again in the Spirit, you will become attractive. You will not be offensive. All of those that are born again in the Spirit attracts the fruits of the Spirit or produces the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. That's why there is harmony within him or her. But when you are not born in the Spirit, you are only born in water. There is always conflict in your spirit, in your psyche, and inside of you, there is still a battle that rages on between the flesh and the spirit. Surrender your life to God. Pray that you will be born in the spirit. This is one of the grounds. This is the ground of your prayers being answered. First of all, he is interested in your salvation. I want to be born again in the spirit. Lord, I want to have the right relationship with you. Because if you are not born in the Spirit, God does not know you yet. You are still born in the flesh. It is your father and mother that just know you. And your fleshly acquaintance. But God does not know you yet. You must be born in the Spirit to have a right relationship with God. Lord, I want to have a right relationship with you. Hallelujah. Without that relationship, God cannot hear you. You are still dead. You must come to life. I want to be born in the Spirit. I want to please you. Only true saved men have the right to ask and receive anything that they want from God. If you are not born in the Spirit, you cannot consider yourself a child of God. You are not yet a child of God. You are not yet a son or a daughter of God. And if you are not yet a daughter and a son of God, then you, you don't have the right relationship. And you, if you don't have that spiritual family relationship with God, you don't have any ground to ask because God does not know you. Hallelujah. How many brothers and sisters do you have in the flesh? I have nine. If somebody will cry and say, I am the tent. Surely, my parents, if they are living, would not recognize that. Because they only uh, have nine children. They would not recognize some, somebody that was not born out of them. It's the same thing in the spirit. You must be born again. In the spirit. Let the life of Jesus Christ be seen in you. Let the life of Jesus Christ be seen in you. Let the Holy Spirit dominate your life and let the fruits of the Spirit be manifested. Then and only then can you say you are a child of God. That is your only ground of asking and receiving from Him. Hallelujah. If you are not born again, then you have no foundation for your faith except promises for forgiveness if you are not born again you're still a sinner when a sinner prays he does not have the right to ask for anything from the father but forgiveness it's only forgiveness that you have the right to ask to not anything else 
All of these promises from God are only promised to his children. Ask anything in my name and I'll do it. These are promises only for his children. If you are still a sinner, not yet a born again child of God, your only promise is to receive forgiveness. Hallelujah. God many times in his mercy helps sinners and hears their cry of despair. But he is not obligated to do for them what he has promised his children that will obey him. It is merely because he wants to prove to the sinner his love and mercy. Even though one is a rebel that God sometimes hears a sinner. He hears a sinner. He wants to save them. But he does not have the right to answer their every petition. Because he only answers petitions that come from his children. That are born again. Hallelujah. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. And God commended his love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. So when a sinner asks something from God. He cannot ask for a bicycle from God. He cannot ask for a house from God. They don't have that relationship yet. He can only ask forgiveness. Lord, forgive me and the Lord will forgive him. Hallelujah. But when a true child of God, a born again child of God in the spirit, asks anything, the Lord hears him because he is a true born again child of God. And he knows in the spirit. And he has a spiritual family relationship with God. That's why when we receive the spirit, Paul says, we can thereby cry, Abba, Father. You can only cry, Abba, Father, when you are already born again in the Spirit. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise How many of you here are born again in the Spirit? Raise your hands. Praise the Lord. If you are born in the Spirit, you have the right to ask from Him. You know, asking and receiving are personal rights of children. Amen. If you are not a child of God, you don't have that right. How many fathers are here? Raise your hands. How many children do you have? For example, you have five children. You only expect Five children to come to you every morning and ask for money because they want to go to school. <laughs> Amen? Amen? If somebody from the outside comes to your house and says, I'm also a child in this house, you would raise your eyebrows, I'm sure. And you would say, who are you? Get out of my house. Amen? Amen. You would not recognize that. So asking and receiving are personal rights of the children of God. With the proper relationship to God, it becomes our family right. Our legal right. Our redemptive right. Our gospel right. Our needful right. Our creative right to ask and receive anything and everything that the Father has promised his own children. Hallelujah. He cannot deny us. If you've been denied, then the Lord knows you are not yet born in the Spirit. There should be no question as to personal rights or the outcome of prayer according to those rights. For all things belong to God and His children and His sons will inherit all things in the end when rebellion is put down. All things are ours. If all things belong to us, and we will finally inherit them. Why not get what we want of them here and now? Father, I'm still in this physical world. I need to survive. I need money. I need clothes. I need shelter. I need education. I need this and I need that. So I can glorify you here on this physical earth. God is obligated to give you what you've asked for. Because you are his child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus taught us the children of God have a right to get all their prayers answered. When the Gentile woman came to Jesus to get her daughter healed, 
Jesus answered, It is not meant and it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs, according to Matthew chapter 15, 21 to 26. She answered wisely and asked for only the crumbs that are the right of a dog. Yes, Lord, it's true that dogs do not have the right to eat in the children's table. But Lord, do not deny the rights of the dog to eat of the crumbs. Amen. There is a dialogue between a Gentile woman who is not considered a ch child of Israel or, or a children of Israel. And then uh, the Lord told him rightly. He said, uh, don't ask for uh, any food from uh, the children's table because it is not meat for you. You are dogs. But the woman said, even the dogs, they have the right also to eat from the crumbs that fell from the children's table. So the Lord, when he heard that, could not resist her faith and said, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. This certainly teaches us that the children of God have certain uh, rights in the heavenly family that outsiders do not have. They have just as much right to expect good things from God as any child in an earthly family has a right to expect things from his parents. I have the right to expect things from you because you are my spiritual father and I am your spiritual child. Just as any earthly father expects to receive something from his earthly parents. Hallelujah. And I thank God that asking and receiving is our personal right. Amen. We have just run out of time, but we will continue next time. And it is God's will to answer your every prayer. Hold on to the TV and I'll pray for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for you. You as a child of God, you've been, you've been uh, oppressed by the devil for a long, long time. You've, you've, you've had uh, 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 prayers that have not been answered for a long time. And you need healing. You need uh, peace in the family. You need a good job. And... Uh, you need to have a right relationship with the Lord. And you didn't have that for a long, long time. Right now, pray for it. And God is going to give you that miracle. Father, give them the miracle of salvation right now. Give them the miracle of healing. Give them peace in their troubled family. And anything that they want from you right now, as they receive you as their personal Savior, make a miracle in their lives right now. Receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Amen. From now on, Holy Father, not my will, but your will be done. I said, Father, you have chosen me. Give me the strength to obey. I will follow you no matter what it takes. If you know me, you cannot, you cannot be neutral about me. Either you will hate me or you will love me. Because there is one, only one important business in the world. It is the business of salvation. September 13, 2003. When you find God, you find His love. Because God is love. Ganon ang pag-ibig ng Panginoon. Walang katapusan na yan ay bumabalik-balik sa atin. If you want to receive, you have to give. You receive it by faith and say, Lord, I will touch you. Because the game plan of God was to save us from seeing through the power of love. He has completed his salvation works in the Spirit. After a put the Lord is open for everyone to come. The salvation works of the Father is now completed in me. Salvation is here.